Hello, I'm Dan, and as of March 2017, this is my latest room tour video. Uh, I know people like these types of videos, and I do too, and uh, it's been probably three years since I made one, at least, uh, maybe closer to four. Uh, it was around the time that I moved into this house, and uh, that was in a room across the hall. And I've been in this room for uh, nearly two years. And uh, it's a little bit bigger, which is nice. So I have a couple more shelves up. And uh, they're actually not all completely full. It's crazy. And I have no records in the closet anymore. But uh, I, I'm in a, a newer room. I have some equipment has changed since the last one. And I uh, figured it was just time uh, to do one, in case you are interested. So I will cut to that now and show you what is happening in here. I suppose I'll start at the closet. Uh, a year ago, I had four boxes of Overflow records in there. And I am kind of proud to say that I don't have any in there anymore. Everything's on the shelves. So uh, it's just a closet clothes and and whatnot uh, these are laminates from my days on the road uh, there's one from bands warp tour about 10 years ago and a few more just uh, mementos of of that time so the collection starts here and uh, this is my surround sound receiver that I've had for about 10 years, and it's still going strong. Works very well. Uh, those are my glass grapes, uh, one of my sets, which I enjoy very much. So the first shelf starts with 12-inch uh, singles, and then my pitifully small hip-hop collection. And then uh, starts the general pop section. With, uh, let's see, AHA, Beach Boys, The Beatles, and Jeff Buckley, of course. And the three cube shelf continues and goes down to what I consider to be the folk and blues section. This is my television. Uh, it's a Vizio, and I've had it for over five years now. And it's uh, still... Still great. Moving on here, this is my Blu-ray player. It's a Samsung J6300, which I recently purchased after uh, quite a while of research because I was trying to find a player that would play the various uh, digital file formats that I use quite often and uh, the last blu-ray player that i had would play those files but particularly on some would decode the 5.1 signal into stereo which was quite annoying and uh, it took me a while to find one that would do exactly what i wanted to do and this one does it it plays everything uh, i haven't had any issues so far and of course it's very fine disc and network player as well. Below that is a Panasonic uh, VCR DVD combo that I've had for quite some time that I rarely use, but it's there just in case, and a little hard drive that is full of movies. And below is another 3-cube shelf. Here on top we have what is... Uh, Records that are on the way out, either for sale or to donate at some point. And next to that are several of the books that I mentioned I've been getting lately. And uh, if you see any titles that you have any comments about, uh, feel free to let me know. And I'm sure that you will. And this is just a few. There's a, there's a bookshelf in the living room with several more. And uh, let's see, below that we have mostly what is my great uncle's 
records that I kept after he passed away, as well as uh, Easy Listening, classic uh, crooner type stuff, uh, Dean Martin, Harry Belafonte, Nat King Cole, uh, Johnny Mathis, things like that. And separated by some sleeves, there is uh, what is the inbox and stuff that I haven't listened to yet. And some of this stuff has been there for years and I still haven't listened to it, which is kind of ridiculous. And below that, I keep mostly uh, what I consider electronic music, stuff like DJ Shadow, Flying Lotus, uh, Profuse 73, Tycho, that kind of stuff. And the few tenant records that I have as well. And here is the computer and speaker setup. So above we have some posters, Black Sabbath. That came with uh, the reissue of Volume 4, I believe. Uh, art proof of the cover of Botch, an anthology of dead ends. And the album cover poster for David Cross, Bigger and blacker -er, Which is a hilarious comedy album if you've never heard it. And you can see I have some sound isolation panels behind everything. Uh, I do some audio production work, and that is what that is for mainly. But it also tightens up and improves playback in from the stereo system in general and uh, reduces the bounce back from the wall. So we have the Sony floor standing speakers, the SSF6000 that I've had for over five years now, and uh, I still find them to be really good. They were quite inexpensive when I got them for what they are, and they are discontinued now. Uh, you can still find them, but they are much more expensive than they were when I got them. But I still find them to be uh, full-sounding, and I, I really don't find that I'm lacking anything in playback from any source, really. I still find them to be really good speakers. And uh, almost every review that you will find on these says they sound way better than they should for how much they cost. And I took off one of the grills so you can see what it looks like underneath. And next to the computer monitor is a set of studio monitor speakers from PreSonus, the R65 model which has a very nice AMT tweeter, which is a very airy and transient tweeter. They sound great. Those are connected to my digital to analog converter, which is made by Emotiva. It's the DC1 Stealth DAC. It's actually the third DAC that I tried, but it's turned out to be the best for my needs. I find that it does very, very well, both in uh, playback and in the audio production work as well. And I also have a mono-priced desktop headphone amp that used to be my DAC, and I use that as a pre and a volume control. And from the DAC, it goes to that, and then I can control the volume out to my main stereo, which I will show you shortly. Okay, so the uh, computer is down there, and... Uh, a mess of cables, which I have tried to keep under control somewhat. And uh, underneath the desk, you'll find some headphones, which I mounted. These are the Sennheiser HD 600s, which are incredible headphones. I, I find they have a really nice full frequency response, and uh, they're open back. They have a really great sound stage, and they have been amazing both for listening to, to music and critical listening in the audio production that I do. I find that in lieu of speakers that cost much, much more than the ones I have, they're a really good neutral reference source for me. And over here you have the Sony MDR V6, which I've had for a long time, like 14 years. And they're, they still do great. They're a closed back and they're great for recording and mixing sometimes they're very adequate and uh, definitely good to have around 
as another source, but I definitely rely on the Sennheisers more. And you can see I have two computer monitors now, which uh, was not really intentional. This monitor here, uh, a little while back, one day it looked like it was a, th a third of it was just dead. And uh, I figured, okay, I'm going to have to get another one. And uh, I got a new one. And just before I unplugged this one, it looked fine. <laughs> it worked just as it did before. And it's been fine ever since. And I figured, well, why don't I see what two monitors looks like? And uh, it turns out it's very, very useful, especially in, in the production work that I do. I can have my main windows there and all the effects and, and plugins floating on the other monitor. And uh, it's very useful for workflow. And of course, on a channel called Vinyl Fury, this would be the main event, uh, the piece de resistance, the turntable, which I've had for several years now. It's the Music Hall MMF 2.2 LE, which is a special edition. Uh, this one is in red, of course. And I got this uh, nearly five years ago. And I still really, really enjoy it. Uh, I did do some upgrades. The aluminum platter I replaced with the Project Acrylate. And the cartridge that it came with, I replaced with the Audio-Technica AT120E which I've made a video for here on the channel that you can check out. And uh, last year, I did some sound isolation. DIY, if you will. I got this acacia wood cutting board and placed it on top of what are called vibra pods and vibra cones. So the pods you could use uh, underneath uh, electronic equipment like an amp or CD player if you wanted to to create isolation from vibrations and the cones have a uh, ball bearing on top so if I were to stomp around on my floor which uh, in this room there's a, a lot of it's a heavy footfall which was the problem which is why I did this it's a hardwood floor right over the basement. So it's this system has really helped tremendously in isolating vibration from the room. So if I shake this tower, those ball bearings will keep the board and the turntable stabilized. So footfall and vibration noise has been significantly reduced, if not completely eliminated, which has been great. Uh, I also have the Project Speedbox underneath, which allows me to electronically control the speed and switch between 33 and 45 without manually changing the pulley, which has been very convenient. And the, uh, the classic solution for uh, stylus cleaning, which is the Mr. Clean Magic Eraser. And uh, if you do not know how that works, you can look that up here on YouTube. There are plenty of uh, fellow vinyl community members which I've shown uh, how that works, and it's a very cheap and effective way to clean the stylus. Also have the AudioQuest carbon fiber brush, as well as a Hunt EDA Mark VI brush. And usually if a record is very dusty, I'll use that first a couple times, and then a pass with the AudioQuest. And if it's already been cleaned or just needs a pre-play dusting, then I will just use that, and it works very, very well. So moving on in the tower, I have the Onkyo C7030 CD player, which I got not too long ago, and I talked about it in my video. That was about mostly record prices and, uh, you know, is it worth it? And I got this CD player, again, after a lot of research, into what would be an economical alternative to buying vinyl all the time. If I had a really good CD player, would that be a suitable alternative to vinyl? And this CD player in particular has magnificent reviews. And I found that it does a great job. It has a really good 
DAC inside. And CDs sound about as good as I could really expect them to. And it's not that expensive. And thankfully, very high quality for a newer piece of equipment. And below is a Rotel cassette deck from the early 90s. It's a RD9658BX. And this would have cost about $400 when it was first released. And I got it for $30 on Craigslist, which was awesome. The original owner was an older gentleman who rarely used it. And it was in great shape and it really was a killer deal. And I still have my amazing Pioneer SX750 receiver, which I've had for almost five years now. And I still really, really enjoy it. It's built like a tank. It's very heavy. And it sounds great. The only thing I wish it had is a mid-EQ knob, which models above it do have. This is from 1977. And ever since I got it, it has just worked flawlessly. They just don't make them like they used to, and that is the truth. And below, there's a few cassette shelves, and there's actually one more underneath my bed. And uh, they are all full. Okay, and on top of my main Expedit shelf, there are a few CDs. Uh, these are ones to listen to, and these are those I have listened to, and those are my 7-inch records, which I will show in a vinyl collection video at some point. And above, one of the several copies of Silverchair Freak Show that I got that was defective, so I went ahead and put it on the wall. And this is a picture of me and my dear friends in the band Caddisfly, with whom I toured with for many years, and uh, I love that picture of us. And this is a self-portrait that I did in a record store several years ago. And a painting that a friend of mine did for me of an acoustic guitar. And a Superman piggy bank, of course. So this is the main vinyl shelving. Starts with what I consider to be rock, classic rock. You can see Jimi Hendrix, uh, Genesis, good old schematics for a blank stare. Over here starts what I consider uh, indie rock. There's a Minus the Bear, Dismemberment Plan, Falls, Pinback, etc. And a recent bottle of Crystal Pepsi. And indie rock continues down till here. And that starts the alternative rock section. And you can see the many copies of Abel Baker Fox's album Voices that I have. At the Drive-In, Deftones, Far, Failure, Foo Fighters, Fugazi. Continuing on, we have Pixies, Radiohead, Silverchair, Third Eye Blind, Weezer. And then it gets down into the uh, hardcore section with the refused Norma Jean snapcase. And then into the small but mighty metal section. Uh, Black Sabbath, Animals as Leaders, Opeth, Sepultura. And then into post rock With Mogwai, uh, Russian Circles, Pelican, and ends with Sigaros. And on either side of my bed, the uh, sheets to which are being cleaned as I film this, I have two uh, two cubed shelves that I've had for quite a while. That I got them very cheaply, and they house my jazz records. So you can see some Coltrane, uh, Hello Supreme, Miles Davis. Down into John Clemmer and Earl Clue, which I just showed in my vinyl collection series. And on the other side of the bed continues the jazz section 
most of what you see on the top there is Sonny Stitt, which is a, a large part of the jazz section. And I'll be showing those eventually in the, in the vinyl collection series. The lamp there came from my grandmother's house. And I'm glad to have it here. It reminds me of, of her and, and her home that I miss. And below is the, the end of the jazz section and the soundtracks. And a, a separate section that I have for the Wyndham Hill type stuff. Mostly Wyndham Hill. Um, new Age music, you might call it. And I keep that all together. And then the last part is uh, some, some odds and ends. Some world music. And it ends with my small selection of comedy albums. All right, there we go. Uh, if you have any questions or comments about what you saw, go ahead and let me know. And if you're new to this channel, if you're a visitor, uh, welcome. Uh, there's a lot more videos. I've been making videos here for about five and a half years now. So there's uh, plenty more. Feel free to look around if you'd like. And uh, as always, thanks for watching. Take care and enjoy your music.